In chapter seven, I learned about the Greeks. So Greeks. So what are the Greeks? The Greeks are Greek letters and some other names that represent various mathematical quantities. So one of them we've seen before, delta. That was partial of V with respect to S. We saw this in the uh, Black-Scholes. Black Shoals. So when we derived Black Shoals, we saw a delta. And what was delta? Delta was the amount of stock we had to short. So this is the um, we short the asset by a factor delta to balance out the long option. And that was the instantaneous time step as we derive Black Shoals. All right. So what does this represent? This represents the sensitivity. to changes in the underlying. So as the asset price changes, the option price changes, and the delta represents you know, the ratio there. So if, if delta is three, the asset price goes up one, then the option price should go up three. But that's just a linear model. That's not the whole story. So then we come to the next one, gamma. This is the second derivative with respect to S. And so gamma is a sensitivity of delta to changes in the underlying. So what happens? S changes, then that makes delta change, and we have to rehedge. All right. So if the asset price, if if we're perfectly hedged and shorting the asset, you know, following the Black-Scholes model, so we have, we're long an option and short the asset, and then asset price changes, delta will change by an amount gamma. So let's draw a little diagram, trying to make this visual. Okay, here is S. And first I'm going to draw the payoff. Here's the payoff. This is a call option, so here's the strike price here. Now I'll draw the value of the option before the payoff. That's not very good. I'll do that again. So this is V of S. So it's sort of a, a curve here. So if we look at a specific point, so up here, What's delta? Delta equals one. You know, down here, delta is about zero. And around here, maybe, delta equals a half. And so this is how much stock we have to short to, to hedge changes in the option price. So this is the, the option as a function of the asset price. What about gamma? So if you think about the second derivative, if the second derivative is positive, you get something like this. The second derivative is negative, you get something like this, just parabolas. So which way does the second derivative go? It opens upwards like this. And so gamma is greater than zero. If gamma is greater than zero, you can say that we're long gamma. So if we're doing the Black-Scholes strategy and we're long the option and short the stock for a call option, we're long gamma. And what does that mean? That means as we rehedge, every time we rehedge, we have a profit. 
but that's not all roses because if the asset pr asset price is not changing, then we're we're losing money basically. We're not gaining enough money to make up for the cost of our position. So you might imagine that gamma is zero, so we could be neutral gamma. And so neutral gamma is nice because that means that we don't have to rehedge very often. So it saves hedging costs. So if there are transaction costs, like it costs money to buy and sell over and over again to hedge every little time period, if we're gamma neutral, that means that as S changes, delta won't change very much. I mean, it might change a little bit because this is not a perfect, um, this is a linear model of how fast delta will change and there's a higher order terms, but this will make delta change not as fast as it would otherwise, which means that our hedging will be simplified. And so what's an example? We might have an exotic option And so we delta hedge by shorting the underlying and then gamma hedge by buying and selling vanilla options. And so this means that we've made it so that the value of our exotic option, as the asset price changes, we, we don't change the value of the exotic option, but then our delta hedge might change, but then because we gamma hedged, that made gamma zero, and that means that our delta doesn't change very much as the price changes. And so this means we're almost entirely hedged so that the asset price change doesn't change any, you know, anything in our position, but it's not the whole story. There's more. So there's speed. And this is the third derivative Oops. of V with respect to S. And so this is just another higher order term. So this is the sensitivity of gamma to changes in the underlying. All right, so that's the most co that's the highest order derivative that's commonly used, but you can imagine there's even, you know, higher order stuff, but that becomes ridiculous. So what else do we have? So another Greek is th capital theta. So capital theta is the change with respect to T. So it's the sensitivity of the option price to time. So for a call option, this will generally be negative. You're losing value over time. And for other, other types of options, it could be positive or negative. All right, now we have another section I, I think of this as parameter risk. So first we have Vega. This is definitely not a Greek letter, <laughs> but Vega is a change of V with respect to volatility. So this is the sensitivity to volatility. volatility. So this is a little bit weird because the volatility is a parameter of the Black-Scholes model. So it it doesn't you can't really take the derivative to it and have it be that meaningful. But if we sort of, you know, don't think about that too much, we can see that if you change the volatility, the value of the option right now changes. And so by by plotting out Vega, we can see how much risk we have for using the wrong volatility in our calculations. And you might think that if you make Vega smaller, there's less risk to using the wrong volatility or misestimating volatility. But there's a little bit of a danger here 
So one little caveat is this only makes sense if gamma has a single sign. So always positive or always negative. If gamma changes sign, then the vega starts not having a, an understandable interpretation and stops being useful. So another Greek is rho. So rho equals change of v with respect to r. This is sensitivity. To interest rate. And so and again, R was a parameter of our model, so you know this is you have to have a little bit of faith that this makes sense, but you can take the derivative with respect to R and think that as as our assumptions about the interest rate change, how does that affect our evaluation of the option? And you can think if this is very large, you might be at risk for having a bad estimate of the interest rate. It's pretty cool. So the Greeks are a way to talk about option pricing and they actually give you a way to think about how to implement hedges. So that's pretty neat.